Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath, how are you? Good. You should not be tired. I've been preaching. This is my third time preaching now, so a little bit tiring. But um, we pray for energy, amen? Pray that God sustains us. And I hope this message this afternoon will inspire us as we move forward to this um, study. <clears throat> Let us pray, and then we will start. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us an opportunity, for giving us an opportunity to come to this church, for keeping us safe, and for bringing our church members to come. Help us, Father, that the message, Lord, would challenge us, not just inspire us, Father, but challenge us to do something, to, to use our talents, Lord, for the finishing of your work. Guide us today, Lord. Thank you for everything that you have done and may you take away all the distractions, Lord, from our hearts and mind, that our hearts and mind will be focused to you today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. How many of you are not here in part one? Part one of a study? No? Okay, most of you probably. Um, we talked about some of my testimonies and the experience, and the whole concept of it is just using your talents for the ministry. Now, I talked about the principle in the Bible, in the book of Luke, where those, the Bible said those who are faithful in that which is what, everyone? Least. So also we give it an opportunity to be faithful in which is that which is much. And we talked about the reason why we don't have that much opportunities to work for God, great things for Him, is because we have taken for granted of the little things that God has given us. And that's the reality. And in fact, we, we visit the, the, a quotation from Mrs. White, and she goes on to say in this book, she said, when you gather up the rays of light which God has given in the past, gather it up, she said, then will he give an increase of light. And so if you're faithful with the light given you previously, he will increase that light given to you. And so we talked about me, my journey on as a filmmaker, was a pastor, and um, and I just watch YouTube videos, and that's what I know. And everything I've learned in YouTube, I would apply it, and the Lord would bless me step by step. I never learned photography. I don't know what shutter speed is, an app stop. I never had a camera in my life, and so I don't know how to use any of these. But I was interested. I was passionate about it, and the Lord sees that. The Lord sees my passion, and every day I would watch YouTube videos, and I would apply all the things that I've learned and God would increase the light by, by just being faithful with God, what God has given us. And so it's the same with us. If you, be, if you want our talents to be used for the ministry, we need to be faithful with what God has given us. Is there any light that God has given you? You need to be faithful with that light. Pray, Lord, help me to be faithful. Because faithfulness equals to opportunities. I talk about just using my phone when I travel around the world, and I would just be faithful with it. And I've realized, because I was a pastor, and a pastor in Jakarta, or a pastor in Indonesia, it's not like we have money. We're not like Pastor Tim, Pastor Baron, who's rich here in Australia, amen? <laughs> uh, we don't have money, and we don't have that much. <laughs> and so we barely survive, but the Lord provides, amen? And so I don't have any camera when I was working as an evangelist in Amazing Facts, but I do have my phone, just being faithful with it. And God sees my faithfulness, and he provides certain uh, people to donate to my ministry because I wanted to make this ministry. And slowly he would give me a camera, and I would be faithful and just shooting with that camera. And I realized one time, I said, Lord, I want to use my photos for the advancement of my work, just not for myself, but I want to use it for the advancement of the work. So I've decided to compile all my photos, and I realized, and I prayed about it, Lord, I hope some, some people going to buy this. And I said, I want to make this as a, 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 a calendar, a travel calendar, the best compilation of my photos out of my 27 countries that I've traveled to, compiled everything, put it in one place, and, and just ask people if they could donate to the ministry. And so compiled all of that, after two years of learning photography, I've compiled the best photos that I have all around the world, and I've compiled into a set of calendars. And I don't have this anymore. It's very few copies left. It's sold out. But um, I brought some of the samples, and these are the photos that I took. And I said, Lord, I want to compile that and donate that into the ministry. Every proceed I'll take, I'll give it all to the ministry, not taking any money from it. And so... 
um, if I could use my talent, which I've never been into a media school or filmmaking school, photography school, if I could use my talent, I've never learned any of these, just self-taught, you could use your talent too for the ministry. So God has given me an opportunity. And one of the reasons why I made this calendar is because of the experience I had when I went to Papua, Indonesia. Have you heard of Papua, Indonesia? You heard of that? Uh, most of the people have only heard Papua New Guinea, but the, the Guinea island is actually divided into two, Papua Indonesia and Papua uh, New Guinea. So it's divided, one part from New Guinea, one part from Indonesia. And so I went to the middle part, and I went to ministries there with the kids, a bunch of kids. They walk for hours and hours to go to a school. And so I went to film them. And so I made a vlog about this. Since I was a filmmaker, I realized that I could use videos to reach a lot of people. And so I made this video. This is about five to six minute video, but this is very pivotal to the message. So I hope you watch and be inspired by it, okay? Just pay attention and just, I hope you enjoy this. One of my favorite videos I've ever made. There are vlogs that I made, but this one is just my favorite. This is already part two. So I'm not gonna show everything, just the part two one. And I'm gonna pull it right there. I hope it works. So really, we only have like 40 minutes to film. Found my spot wherein I could fly my drone. Things damp and wet now. The kids need to cross there, and we're letting them wait because we're gonna film the activity. Hopefully, this will not kill my camera. It takes the children an hour to get to the school. They start walking at just the break of dawn. The hike is uphill through unforgiving terrain. Many children need to be pulled out of bed and stuffed into their private cars. Not here. Every step was a sacrifice. It made me think to myself, how far will you go for knowledge? How far will you go for education? How far will you go to find the truth? Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> Today, we're giving them some Kit Kats, that's all we have. We don't have that much, but we do have some chocolates with us. We've decided to give them some chocolates. Sorry, if those healthy people, some sorry. Of them, it's their first give time them to taste them. And the reaction is just priceless. <laughs> School is not all fun and games here in the jungle. As part of their education, these children tend to their gardens. But even though they're working with their hands, you won't see them frown. They saw manual labor as a joy and a privilege, and they understood that they must work in order to eat. No one was complaining. Everyone concentrated on the task at hand. So now we're filming the kids going to the shower. This is where their shower is, pass through the rivers. School showers are special here in the jungle but there's no shower room to speak of. Instead, the children wash off their dirt in the cool stream of a waterfall. No one needs to pay the water bill. No one needs to turn off the tap. The missionaries help the children shower, and the children need to shower. Each of them has only one change of school uniform. They use these uniform every day. They cannot risk them against the elements, so they keep their uniform safe and locked away. In Obotongo, there's no furnished classrooms. They only have grass floors and no furniture. But the furniture is not important. The spirit of prophecy says that the character and the spirit, that is important. 
I could see that the children were eager to learn and ready to study. That was what really mattered. It may be sad to think that many of us who sit in furnished, air-conditioned classrooms can still find things to complain about. The joy that these children have is an illustration that those who have less tend to appreciate what they have more. So, we're in a rush because we're catching Gary and we're like 40 minutes away. So we need to run. Dude, like nine minutes. Now. Nine minutes? Let's go. So we're on our way right now to catch our next flight. We're gonna head to another village. Day two has been really challenging so far. Wow, I'm really tired. <laughs> So the plane has just landed and we need to walk all the way down, going up. 30 minutes for a foreigner, five minutes for a local. Twenty kilos on my back too. Hey, that was scary. Good. So we don't have time to do an interview, but um, this is Professor Dimara. His wife was here before, and they were doing mission work. The wife ate some fruit. She probably had an allergic reaction to it, and she eventually died. Faro will be her first death anniversary. He's here visiting. He wants to finish the work here in Obotongo because he doesn't want he doesn't want the work of his wife in vain. Thank you. It's a very inspiring man. Yeah. It's time to say goodbye to the people. Uh, it's always hard to say goodbye. Thank you. God bless you. Good job, man. You okay? Bye bye. <laughs> As I waved goodbye to those children, I realized that I had so much, and yet I had so little. These kids taught me a valuable lesson. And that is their joy is not dependent on material things or the conditions of their circumstances. It doesn't matter to them that they must walk miles to reach the nearest schoolhouse. They are simply grateful for an opportunity to learn. Friends, where does your joy come from? Is it dependent on your circumstances or based in gratefulness to God for each gift He offers? If you're inspired by this video and are willing to help build more jungle schools or to become a missionary teacher in one of the villages, please contact the email in the description below. God bless you and hope to see you in episode 3. It's no episode 3 yet. We got busy. So I hope you enjoyed that. I can't see you, bro. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I did that. When I was there, it changed my mind totally. And I said, Lord, help me to build these kids' jungle schools because they walk for, for hours, you know, just to reach the school. So this one, we did some fundraising, and I hope that this will help the kids, you know, to do more uh, of the jungle. And if you see the end of the calendar, you see a picture of them walking in the bridge. That was just one of the best sights I've ever seen in my life. And so, yeah, they, they ministered to me. The pastor that was there, Pastor Damara, actually had his wife. They were doing an evangelist meeting there. The wife is doing the kids' program. And the people from that village gave her fruit that she's not supposed to eat. You know, the, the, the locals eat that fruit. They're probably get used to it. But she was allergic to it, most probably. And when she ate it, she just, just you know, had an allergic reaction that she died. And they tried to call the, 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 the main uh, uh, headquarters. Uh, it's Sabbath day. They were, you know, outside worshiping. It was too late. So when, when, when the team arrived, she's already a corpse, yeah. She's already dead. And so the, the, the husband was there crying. And, and I remember Pastor Boyd and the pilot was talking to me about this. And she said, we tried to talk to this man to go home to bring his wife home, you yeah. know. He said, he said, I'm going to stay here because my wife wouldn't want me to leave. He, she wants me to finish the work. And so they sent the, 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 the body away, and, she, and he remained for one more week to, to do his evangelistic meeting. 
It was amazing. Yeah, that pastor, that, it changed my mind. I was a, a pastor at this moment, and I just used to complain about how traffic it was in Jakarta. Like, it's so traffic. The board meeting was so bad, you know. Tim was part of the board. And so I was complaining about how, you know, like, oh, why are we doing this board meeting all the time, you know? I, that was my complaint all the time. This guy, he was a pastor there. He said he would walk for two hours, three hours, just to get Bible studies. I said, wow, that, that's intense. And so that, that really changed my life. And I said, Lord, I want to use my talent to help these kids in the jungle. Uh, so that's the picture of the kids, these kids right there. It's such an amazing sight. We gave them uniforms just to boost their morale. Just, they go to school. But there's only one uni- piece of uniform. So they would go out in the mud, walk every day, we'll wash them first, and we would let them wear the uniform. And then right before they leave, they would just keep the uniform. You know, and they would do... Um, they would plant in order for them to eat, yeah? So we, we taught them that. It's an amazing, amazing experience. Um, the next village that we visited right after this was, um, I met these two girls. She's 19 and she's 21. And, this, and these girls were both Muslims by faith. They got converted into the church, got persecuted by their family. They decided, you know what, we want to go to the jungles of Papua, Indonesia. They went to apply, 1,000 missionary movement, 19 and 21 years old. Young people. Can you imagine that? And, and the pilot was talking to me about this, and he said, I was in a dilemma because I don't know where to put 19 and 21 years old. Where do you want to put them? You know, these girls. Because this is a dense jungle, unreached population. And so he decided to, you know what, I'm going to bring them to a place where there's no Adventists at all, and I want to let them reach out to these people. But one thing I've learned about these girls is that they were faithful on what they had. They were just converted into Christianity, but they were faithful on what they had. So they were sent there. A story told me, when I came there, they told me this story, and they said, when we came here, we don't know the language at all. Because they're Indonesians, though it's part of Indonesia, the people here speak Papuans. Yeah, their own dialect. And so when the girls came, they don't know the language, but they, they start giving books to people. I believe that was a great controversy to start to give books to people. And so when they start to give books to these people, some people complain they don't know how to read. And they'll say, just take the book, we'll teach you how to read. And so this lady was complaining because she had a book, she don't know how to read. The two girls said, just keep it, and we'll try to teach you some other time how to read. And so they told me that the next morning, the lady was running towards them, telling them, that the book you, they gave was glowing that night. And beside the book, there was an angel glowing saying, you need to give yourself to Christ through these girls. The woman was baptized. In a few months, these two girls, 19 and 21, made a school in that jungle. 19 and 21 years old. Young girls using what they have to the ministry. If these girls, 19 and 21, who is new to the church can do that, you can do that too, amen? By just being faithful by the talents that God has given you. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. I took that by heart, and I've told you in part one, I was faithful, God knows I was faithful with the opportunities that God has given me, and so, by that faithfulness, God opens the door. I get to travel around the world by just being faithful. I've never learned any of these videography and photography stuff, just being faithful. Today, I'm going to share you some of the journeys that I've been through, some of the interesting stuff. I'm going to start with my journey last two weeks ago in a place called North Korea. Have you heard of North Korea before? I won't recommend you go in there, but I went to North Korea. And so so place North Korea is pretty messed up. And so uh, I was in China preaching one time in a place called Dalian. And Dalian, China was very near to the border. And uh, I went to a place called Dandong. And so I decided and prayed for it. And I said, Lord, I wanted to go to North Korea. I wanted to see how it is in North Korea. But it was difficult because I was a filmmaker plus I was a pastor. And so it's difficult for me to apply for my visa, going into tours. Because you need to go to the tour. You can't go to North Korea by yourself. You get shot. And so I went to... A tour ask everyone and say, hey, guys, would you allow me to go? What's your job? I'm a filmmaker. Oh, we saw on Facebook, you're also a pastor. 
you can't go, man. It's, it's, it's difficult for you to go in. But I was so persistent, and I prayed for it. I said, I really want to go, Lord, because ever since I was younger, I really want to go to North Korea. And so there was this Chinese tour who brings Chinese people to North Korea. I applied that way through there, not to the Western tours. And so I went there, probably passed as a Chinese. And so, not an offense to Chinese people, um, but yeah, probably I asked them, I said, hey, is it possible if I could join you guys? And the woman speaks English. I said, sure, just give us your passport. The next few days, I think it took us like two weeks to, I was praying and she was like, oh, I think this is impossible. It's not going to work. Blah, blah, blah. But, but the day before I left, she said, oh, they approved your visa. And so it was, oh, praise the Lord. And so I went the next day. I went to Dandong. The border I was praying for it. Did not tell my family. They're going to kill me. But I was just, I'm going to go to North Korea. So we crossed the North Korea. And one of the, the most significant experiences that I had was going in to a place called Suijun. And then when we went there, the tour guide said, by the way, Everyone is required to bow down to the statue of the supreme leader. Can you imagine that? And I'm a pastor, a Christian. I don't believe in bowing down to statues. And so they asked me, and by the way, this is why you don't need to come to North Korea, because they'll, they'll force you to, to bow down. And so these statues, right, I forgot this guy's name, but this guy's King Jong Il, I believe, the Kim dynasty. And so they asked me to bow down. The first request was to get some flowers and to offer it to the, to the statue. And I said, I don't do that. I'm sorry. And so I skipped that. And so I went in. They lined us up like this, right, in a row. First row, women. And the second row with men. So we stood up there. And they said, on the count of three, we bow down together just like this, right? And I was like, conscientiously, I said, I can't do that. I can't bow down to someone like this. And so I prayed for it. I was so scared because someone's going to shoot me. Or I don't know what's going to happen. And so I was like shaking. And I, I had finally the opportunity or the strength to talk to this North Korean. She speaks English, North Korean tour guide. And I said, I don't bow down to statues. And then she said, oh, you believe in God? I said, yeah, I believe in God. And she laughed so hard. I don't know why. But I said, yeah, I believe in God. And I believe in the Bible. And the Bible said I should not bow down to idols. And she said, I was so scared. She said, if you choose to disrespect our supreme leader, I respect that opinion. Okay, you can stand up. And so I was like, whew, praise the Lord. And so I stood up there like this, and everyone was lighting up, and I was just, this is, is going to drop so hard. And she said, one, two, three, everyone was just bowing down. And I was there, <laughs> not going to bow down. The feeling of not bowing down while the rest of the people in front of you is bowing down is the most intense feeling I've ever had in my life. Look at myself if I was just scared. The military around you, but they let me pass, praise the Lord, amen? amen. But I've realized that God has given me that experience because of the faithfulness that which is least, just being faithful because when that time comes, we will never be able to stand. Now, there's no fiery furnace, just like Daniel 3, right? There's no AK-47 pointing in my head. But I was able to stand up because I have purposed in my heart to be faithful in the little things that God has given in my life. And so it is in our life. Now, again, I did not say the story just for you to go to North Korea. Please don't misunderstand. I don't recommend going to North Korea. But it was such an amazing experience. I was able to minister to the tour guide. We were eating in a restaurant, and they were serving beer, meat, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and she was so curious why I'm just eating kimchi. And I was like, that's the only thing I could eat. And, <laughs> and I was like, I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat drink, I drink beer and all that kind of stuff. And she was so curious. She sat down beside me and asked me why. So I was able to give her the health message. Praise the Lord. And I hope that would bring up some seeds in her heart. Please pray for those people in North Korea. There are about 70,000 persecuted Christians in labor camps right now in North Korea. Please pray for them. Number one right now who is a place to be, that is persecuted is North Korea. Please pray for those people. So those, these experiences by just being faithful with what you have. I remember, I don't know if you've seen this man. His name is Brother Taj Paklev, one of our evangelists in the church. I remember one time we were in a place called Tonga, and I had my bag with me, my camera bag, 
Everything that I own, most of the time, is in this bag, in a suitcase. So this is my life, my wife, my girlfriend, everything. And that's what I own. And I have a small suitcase that I travel with. I don't own anything beside that. I try to pray the Lord that he give me a minimalistic life. Anything that's not fit in my bag, does, it goes away. And so I have less problem, less, you know, less trials in trying to find some clothes, whatever fit, just go. So when I went there, everything in my bag, I always bring this. We went to a place called uh, Fiji. Any Fijians? Sorry, this is just a bad, bad, uh, bad product placement about Fiji. But anyways, what happened was we were preaching in a, a place called Suva in Fiji, and it was, uh, we were filming a devotional with my friend Taj Pakleb. And while we were filming, we put our bags in the back. It's what, it was a rainforest. It was a forest. So while we were filming like this, right, and then I turned back, and my friend Taj, while he was speaking to the camera, he shouted, just, ooh, and then he runs. And when I look back, Two guys, two huge Fijians, grab their bags, and they start running. It was the most horrible thing I've ever like, experienced. So they took our bags, they ran away. $9,000 worth of our equipment was stolen. $9,000. I don't know where I get, will I get ever money again to buy those equipments because those people donated those money, and Taj, is, Taj was able to save my bag, but... People stole his camera equipment, $9,000 worth of equipment. So we prayed about it, and we were so scared. Deep inside our hearts, we dedicate our lives to God, and he promised to protect us in our equipment. So he prayed for it. That night, my brother Taj preached in the evangelistic meeting. As an in introduction, he made an appeal. He said, if you've seen this bag, <laughs> it was stolen. <laughs> Please tell us or tell the police that our bag is stolen, and this is the bag and I remember the guy's slipper was, you know, he, he left his slipper. It was almost like Cinderella's story. <laughs> they took a picture of it. We don't have any evidence, but this is his slipper. <laughs> and so it was aired in national uh, and internet television in, in, in all Fiji, all over Fiji. That night, we did not know that the chief of police of all Fiji was listening to the sermon. And so he called all his men and said, you can't go to the office tomorrow until you find that bag. And so they kept searching that night to potential robbers' house. And the next morning, 6 a.m., I received a call and said, hey, you guys need to go to the police station. When I arrived, the bag was there. Everything was returned except for our Bible. So please pray for that Bible. May it be used for God's glory. You are able to see the man who robbed us. He was only 17 years old. He was a boy. And we were able to pray for him. Taj used to be a drug addict and also addicted to marijuana. And so he used to be in jail also. And so he said to the boy, don't worry, man. I was also in jail when I was 14. And so God gives us chances. And so please pray for that boy. But the lesson is that if you work for God fully, he'll protect you. Amen? It's just an amazing opportunity, my friends. I would, I was, God is giving me opportunities to travel with him. We would swim with sharks without cage, a cage. It was just an amazing experience. And, and I was able to use my talent in media ministry all over these areas and use that to reach more people around the world in, in internet. I was able to travel in a place called Tonga. Have you been to Tonga before? We were able to swim with the whales for six days. It was such an amazing experience. We were able to dive with them, and, and just, it's just an amazing experience. In fact, let me show you a video that I posted in social media that God used in advancing of his work. Let's, let's, let's see this video. This one was in Tonga that I filmed.
that amazing? Yeah. Such an amazing experience. I was able to swim with the whales for six days. Such an amazing experience. It was one of the most, the best highlights of my year last year. And so I was able to do that. I used to just dream of becoming a National Geographic photographer or a filmmaker. But it was, it was like, I want to swim with the whales, swim with the sharks. And through the ministry, God has given me that. And only through that concept of being faithful in that which is least. I remember posting a picture of the whale, the mama whale, and the papa whale right there with the baby. And I posted that on Facebook. And someone commented, and just a picture of them, right? Someone commented in that picture. And she said, she's from Australia. I've never met this person but she follows me on Instagram. She commented me on Instagram and said, hey, that's my Instagram, by the way, pa Pastor Jasper, would it be possible to get a copy of this, the picture? My mother was diagnosed with cancer earlier this year, and on her final day of work, flying her float plane over the ocean, she saw a mother whale teaching her baby to swim and come up for air just like this. The baby would drop down and she would disappear and bring it back up to the surface. It was a promise to her by God that he would do the same. Isn't that amazing? The mom flew the plane and she said, oh, just like the mother whale teaching the, mo the baby whale how to swim, you know, the whale will go down, but the mom will, will bring him up to, to, to breathe, right? And they said, that's the experience. It was a promise by God that though I'm in this, in, in underwater right now, you bring me up to the surface soon. So that was a promise. And she said, can I have a copy of that picture so I could give it as, to my mom as a, send, a sign of hope for her. And so I send her a copy, and you don't need to pay my sister. I said, I send her a copy, and that picture was, is now in, this, in her house. It's a reminder of God's hope for her mom. Amen? Simple photograph. You see, you can use these photographs to reach a lot of people. You may not understand now, but soon enough you can, and you will see. I remember one of the first videos I made was the ugliest video I've ever made, and I don't want to show it to you because it doesn't give me pride. <laughs> it makes me shameful. <laughs> but anyways, one of the first videos I made was for Adventist Aviation. Again, I don't know how to shoot a video, but what was the recipe? Being faithful with what you have, with what you know. So I know how to shoot some, and so I decided to, you know what, I'm going to use my talent for the ministry. So I made this video. It was, I made that two years ago or three years ago, if I'm not mistaken, so I went to Papua, shot this video. I don't know what I was doing, but again, I was just faithful with what has give, God has given me. Posted that in Facebook. I returned. After a few years, I received a message from a man in Facebook. He said this, Paul Daly. He said, this video has so inspired me that this year I have become a missionary pilot for Adventist Aviation Services, Papua New Guinea. God bless you and Gary and all who support you. Amen. Just that video, the ugliest video I've ever made. Someone said, I became a pilot because of that video. Isn't that amazing? To call his family, all, every, every, like his, sold everything, just went to Papua in the forest, used his talent as a pilot, and used his skill as a pilot to the ministry just because of watching one ugly video. Amen? If God could use my ugly video, he could use yours too. I mean, I'm not saying your videos are ugly, but he could use your video. Anyways, you remember there was a time where I talked, I mean, this morning, uh, this, the first part, I talked about the experience that I have in El Nido, where I went and I made a video. It was a two-minute video, and right after a few days, it got into 1.3 million views. It went viral in the Philippines, and so many people watched it. I remember, so I remember I was in Tim's house, and I was just sitting right after, I think right after Easter camp. Someone called me up, right? He called, someone called me up and said, Hey, Jasper, we saw your video. We want you to make us a video. I said, Who is this? He said, This is a representative from Philippine Airlines. It's like, Philippine what? Philippine Airlines. Oh, Philippine Airlines? What do you mean? They said, Yeah, we want you to make the same video for us. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm not professional. I'm not, this is two years ago. I don't know what I'm doing with, with what I have. But again, faithful miss with what you have. And so I said, uh, I guess, sure. So, oh, we'll give you money. We'll give you free hotels and a business class ticket every time you work for us. I said, sure. 
And so I, so I called my pastor. I was a pastor. It was not ethical for a pastor to work, even though if you have a salary from the church, it's not ethical for you to work and get more money from other, other resources. You need to focus on the ministry. And so I prayed for it, and I talked to my church members. And I said, hey, would you allow me to go work for the Philippine Airlines, and every single money I get, I give it to the church? And they said, sure, because I'm just after the business class ticket too. And I said, sure. <laughs> you can get the money. I didn't get the experience. And so I said, they said, sure. And so I flew. The first video we made was in an island called Rumblon, and we posted it on Facebook. It got up to 2.7 million views. 2.7 million views for Philippine Airlines. I said, wow, could reach a lot of people. And so I realized that I can incorporate this into the ministry without being fired. Because if you get too religious, goodbye. And so I said, how do I incorporate something into the videos that could reach millions of people and without me, without Philippine Airlines being angry to me. And so what I did was, when the second video we made, it's an island called Cebu. Have you been to Cebu Island, anyone? Cebu, a place called Beautiful Island. You need to go there. Beautiful. So they sent us there for six days, and we need to film the adventure, right? So I'm going to show you some of the ventures. Uh, Randy, you need to control the sound in this because the music is really bad. I did not choose the music, disclaimer. So they choose this for me. But this is the adventures that we did, right? Sorry about that. Yeah, go you. Isn't that amazing? Went to swim with the whale sharks. So that, and you can watch that. You're not going to watch the whole thing. But you, that video got 4 million views on Facebook. And so, wow, I want to use, incorporate something out of the video, right? So what I did was... You know, in, in Hollywood, they have subliminal messaging or in, in you, know, you know subliminal messaging where they s- flash something like McDonald's and it's like, you know what? I want to eat some McDonald's burger <laughs> because he watched it, right? And so I said, I want to use that technique, right? And, and so this is what I did. This is the intro. I hope you're fast enough to notice this. Go on, bro. Yeah, Ministry of Healing, one of my favorite books. I said, because the scene was... The scene was this, you know, backpacker is packing his things, right? His passport, his cameras. But I want to put Ministry of Healing there for like five, ten seconds. And so if you go to the Philippine Airline website, it's a bunch of Adventists commenting, hey, you guys, you know what? Ministry of Healing. It's amazing. <laughs> so out of four million views, I hope they, they, they got some little messaging, you know? Amen? So just little things. I cannot give the full blast of the, minute of the gospel on the Philippine Airlines Add but I can do what I can. Amen? If I could do that and sneak that in, so the, 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 the producers actually saw that, but it's already 4 million views. I said, you can delete it if you like. It's already done. So they said, okay, just put it there. And so, yeah, if I could use that, you could incorporate something in your office, in your, in your family or whatever it is, right? Amen? You could use something for the... Ministry. God provides, my dear friends. I was able to travel all around the world. Out of, I think it was 30 second country now, I was able to travel the world without any money. I left my job as a pastor without a stable job, no income, but I was able to say, Lord, I wanted to trust you by faith. You're called me. You will provide for me. And there's a lot of opportunities to work in, in different places, but I wanted Though there's a lot of opportunities, I said, a stable job. I wanted to, opportunity, be, to have an opportunity to, to work for God in the front line. So God has given him an opportunity to do that. Um, there was a quotation from the book Ministry of Healing. She, she said this, Our Heavenly Father has how many ways? Thousands of ways to provide for us of which we know nothing. Those who accept the one principle of making the service of God supreme will find perplexities vanish and a plain path before their feet. Isn't that an amazing quotation? 
I took that by heart and I said, Lord, if I stepped into the land, the Bible said, if you put the soles of your feet in the land, the land is yours. And you have thousands of ways to provide in which I know nothing about. That means if I know 1,000 ways, guess what? The Lord knows 1,000 more that I don't know. And I took that by heart and said, wow, God do provide. I've traveled around the world, friends, without... I remember last year, I never had a bank account, but I was able to travel the world, going around without legitimate source of funds, but God does provide. Just a little experience. If you're a Filipino, it's difficult for you to travel around the world. Any Filipinos coming into Australia, did you, did you feel the pressure of just applying for a visa? It's difficult, especially going to Australia. They ask you your money, your bank account. Do you have any source of income in the Philippines? And I don't have that. I've been a missionary for, for seven years, and, and I never have any income at all to show people. And so I remember coming into Australia, Tim invited me to come, and I said, Tim, here we go again. They're going to ask me again how much money I have in my bank account, and I don't have any money. I remember I just built, put my bank account up, Bank of America, because the Philippines will never even give me a bank account because I don't have work. They said, you're no, you don't have legitimate work. You're just uh, this. So I remember I only have $100 in my bank account. And so coming in, I was in Indonesia applying for my Australian visa. And we're praying for it. And they said, Lord, they're going to ask me again about my money. I don't have any money. You need to print your bank statement in order for you to be approved. And so coming in, it was very difficult. I was praying hard because next year, this year, uh, this month, I need to be here in Australia. And so I was praying for it and I said, Lord, will you allow me to go to Australia again? Because this is my second time. And so I prayed for it. I remember before coming in the next day, I said, Lord, I don't have any money. I don't know what to do next day. But you promised that you provide thousands of ways, right? So what happened was, the next day, I have $100 in my bank account. The next day, I look at my phone and notification. It says, you received $5,000 in your bank account. $5,000, what? $5,000? I was so shocked. And so I won't tell you who the employer was. I, told you, I, I called them and said, hey, why did you send me $5,000? I don't remember working for you worth $5,000. And they said, Oh, we made a mistake. It's not supposed to be for you. It's supposed to be for someone else. And I said, really? But can I use the money? I'll just print my bank statement. <laughs> Don't tell the embassy. But anyways, I tell, hey, can I print this and show the Australians that I have cash? And I said, uh, and they said, okay, sure, just return it. And I said, okay. And so the next day, I printed it out. I was so proud coming to embassy. I have five, five grand. And I said, hey, guys. Uh, bank statement. Shh. The next day, say, okay, your visa is approved. Amen? Amen? Of course, I need to return the money. I was broke again. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the point was, God has thousands of ways. Amen? Amen? And that's why I'm here. It's because it's just that miracle. God does provide. Amen? Amen? Amen. We just need to step out of the boat, my dear friends. I was able to... How many here have... have, have uh, I've, I've heard of Lineage Journey. Lineage Journey, anyone? Lineage Journey is a, if you could YouTube it and Facebook it, it's just five, three to five minute videos about the Reformation. And, and this is in Europe. So two years, no, yeah, two years ago, I went, quit pastoral work for this, to do media ministry. I don't know where it was going, but I was praying for it. Lord, please provide me an opportunity to go to Europe because I really want to do this ministry. This is just five-minute videos about the Reformation, about Huss, Jerome, and all those people. So what happened was, again, the visa issue came in. I'm a Filipino. I need to apply for a visa because I can't go anywhere without that visa. I can't wait to go to heaven, amen? But there's no border control. There's no more interviews. You just need to go to a place. I can't wait for that time. So I was like, Lord, how do I travel without a visa? I need to get a visa. So I prayed for it hard. And so what happened was I was in the Philippines. I quit my job, no more job, literally no money. But God has called me to go and get a visa. We were shooting. We were scheduled to shoot on a place called Prague. Have you been to Prague before? 
Czech Republic. And so there was a man, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love, your, I love your country, beautiful. And so I went to Prague, and so before coming, I literally have no visa, but God directed me to go to Czech Republic. Coming in there, I was interviewed and all that kind of stuff. The people heard that I am going to Prague to film the story of John Huss. You heard of John Huss? John Huss, Huss or Jerome, very famous in Prague. If you're the great controversy, you'll probably see them there. And so went to Prague's embassy and they'd say, oh, you're interested in, in John Huss. And they talked to the consul, the head of the consulate in, Manila's, uh, in Manila, right, the embassy of Czech Republic, heard that I'm coming to Prague. He was so interested, he asked me into a private meeting. Instead of being interviewed, I went to the, the consul. He talked to me and he said, hey, come, I would love to talk to you. Why are you interested about John Huss? And I said this and that and the other, and he gave me an hour lecture about John Huss, about where he lives, who he is, and all that kind of stuff. I sat there listening to him for an hour. And I asked him, would you give me a visa? I was like, ah, I'll think about it. And then, <laughs> and, so, and so I said, and he asked me, um, where do you get this information from about John Huss? Who inspired you? And then I said, well, I have this book in my bag. So I got in my bag, opened my bag, opened the book called The Great Controversy. Have you heard of Great Controversy before? Opened the book, the chapter called Huss and Jerome. Opened it, and I said, this is where I get my information from, my inspiration. And so he read the book, and I said, yeah, I'll give you the book. And he said, oh, well, think about it. We'll, we'll see in, in five days. After five days, I received an email. He said, I've read the book, and I'm giving you a visa to go to Prague. Isn't that amazing? No cash, no, nothing to show them. But God does provide. Amen? Every time I go to the travel, go to travel, it's all like that. Why? Just being faithful with what you have. Every time I travel around the world, it's all about visa problems. But God provides. Remember going to America? Nothing to prove also that I have money. I have friends who are doctors, who are nurses, who have all these businesses in, in, in the Philippines who got denied just to go to, the Philipp- to America as a tourist, got denied. I was so scared. When my, next, when my turn was, was, was about to, be, to, to come, I was so scared. It's like, you've been, this guy's been denying people, and he's going to deny me too. When I came in, he asked me, what are you going to do in the U.S.? Uh, what's your job? I said, I'm a missionary. And then he stamped me. He said, okay, I'm giving you 10 years. That's it. Never even asked me. He just said, okay, I'm giving you 10 years. That's it. So I was able to fly in America and give me 10 years worth of visa. Never asked me any questions at all. I don't know how it happened, but the Lord does provide a way for us to work. Amen? Amen. If it's God's will, my dear friends, He always provides. Traveling around the world, being faithful with what you have. This picture, I put it here because this is such a significant picture for me. This was in Venice. Who may have been to Venice before? Have you noticed how expensive Venice was? Anyone can remember how expensive that was? It was so expensive to go to Venice. But I need to go to Venice because I need to film. But I don't have any place to stay. I don't know anyone in Venice. So I, can't, I looked at the hostels, everything. I cannot afford anything in Venice. I was in Budapest, Hungary, traveling in an airplane, praying, Lord, I'm going to be in Venice I don't mind sleeping in a train station, but you know it's winter, and I'm a Filipino. (laughs) Guess what? That doesn't really rhyme together. And so it's hard for me to survive in winter, prayed about it, and said, Lord, please provide for me a place to stay. I don't mind sleeping in a train station, but please don't make it too cold. And so when I arrive, I've already set my mind, I'm going to stay in their train station. It's better than what we have in the Philippines. I don't mind. And so prayed about it. I arrived in the train station. I received a call from a person in Facebook I've never met in my life. She said, hey, where are you? I said, I'm in Venice. I said, I am really impressed by God to help you by whatever means. And I said, are you in Venice? Do you know anyone in Venice? I said, no, I don't know anyone in Venice. She said, would you mind if I book you a hotel in Venice? Just like that. And so I dropped the phone. She said, okay, I'll call you back in five minutes. After five minutes, she said, oh, your hotel is booked. Just need to go there. And so I went to Venice. This is Venice, by the way. It's expensive. I came into Venice, right? And so when I was in the reception talking to this woman, she said, oh, Sir Jasper, we are sorry to tell you that all rooms are booked. There's some miscommunication or whatever in the system. So your rooms is no longer available. But we have upgraded you to the best room. 
So I was able to sleep in Venice in one of the best rooms in Five Star Hotel. Amen? I'm not saying this to you so you could go to Venice and have a hotel. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that if it's God's will, it's always God's bill. Amen? <laughs> traveling the world, traveling to Iceland. I, let me tell you a secret. One thing that I really want to do is want to go to Iceland because I want to be a National Geographic photographer. And Iceland is just an amazing place. A friend of mine goes to Iceland. He wants to go to Iceland. He was a student. My, Bible stu- my, my, my friend in Indonesia called me up. I was in Paris and about to end my trip in Europe. He said, hey, you want to go to Iceland? I'm going to Iceland, but I need company. If you want to go with me, I'll buy your return ticket for six days, and I'll just take care of you. And so I went to Iceland for free. The Lord provides. Amen? Amen. 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 I went to, to spend my life in Europe for four months, unpaid, nothing at all, and I was not able to spend a single penny in Europe. I would preach every Sabbath just for people to take care of me. I would preach for you for soup, man. I'll tell them, <laughs> give me rice and I'll survive. And so we were able to finish our, our work, our work in Lineage Journey. And we're happy to tell you that all Lineage Journey, 48 episodes, is now equivalent to almost 1 million views. So I'm happy to say, to say that. And, and the Lord just provided for us, four of us in that team, we were not paid. We're just willing to work for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And now season two was also done. The general conference now provided for us, and now they're giving us um, a stipend in which we can eat, you know, and we can travel. So praise the Lord for that. Friends, today I want to tell you that we don't work for the outcome. Or we don't work for the income. We work for the outcome. Always remember that, friends. We don't work because God is this and that. No, we're just working because it's an opportunity for us to be with Jesus Christ. Amen? So I would encourage you, friends, today as we close, just be faithful with God, what God has given you. Is there any talents that you think God can use? Be faithful with that. I don't know what to tell you and what to do with it because I'm not talented in in, in many ways. Just talented in, in making videos. That's all I know. But if you have talent in your lives, remember, friends, that today God is able to use you. You know what? I'm thinking I realized as I close and make an appeal to you guys. You remember the story of Peter? You remember the story of Peter? He was in the boat and there was a storm and he felt like he saw Jesus Christ in the sea. And do you know what he said? He said, Jesus, if if that's you, allow me to walk on water. And Jesus said, come. And then Peter went out and started to walk and he started to to sink. And sometimes we laugh at Peter because he sank. Oh, Peter, oh, little faith. But if you think about it, Peter was the only one who walked in water. The rest of the disciples did not. You know why? Peter was the only one who was willing to go out of the boat. And I realized in the church, many people want to listen to testimonies. They said, oh, I want that experience too. Oh, I want to experience what you experience. But very few are willing to step out of the boat. Young people, is God calling you to do something big for him, dangerously for him? Maybe he's calling you to do something big and you're not willing to step out of the boat. This is the reason why we don't experience miracles. Why? Because we're just affordable, sitting down in the church, looking at other people do things. I challenge you today to step out of the boat and try God, friends. And I tell you, you have stories you can never imagine. If you give me time until tomorrow, stories will never end. But we'll, we need to close. But what I'm telling you today, friends, is that give God a chance to give you a miracle. Don't depend so much on security, but use your talent, friends, to help God finish the work. And I tell you the truth, he will provide for you. Do something for God, and you will see. Based on that call, friends, there is a survey here. There's a survey, and my friends up there, we're gonna give, it's going to give you some survey. Are you going to give it now? Are we going to give it now? Yes, we're going to give you, a friend's going to give you some survey right here. Can you please pass that survey for us? And we're going to go through the survey, and I hope you can help our church here, man. We're just the talents that God has given you, and this is a, a good place to begin, using your talents for the ministry. Just a little survey here. 
It's a little survey. And are they going to return this right after to us, right? Yes. So get your details. You also have a pen and a paper that we can provide to our friends. Raise your hand if you have not received a survey yet. Okay, just right here. My right. Our brother here has no survey. Hmm? No worries. Just put it in. If you're not a member, you can still put your name here, right? Yeah, anyone. Anyone in this room, including Brother Tim. You need to put your name here, Tim, too. To Tim. All right, cool. Anyone has not received yet any surveys? And then we'll begin through it. Yes, this, this side, uh, Stanley. Tan, this one. Okay, so we will go through it. You put your name, your contact details, your occupation. And then there's a skill and hobbies and interest about in this in the, in the first part. What is your passion? Your interests, hobbies, or favorite activities? Are you creative, artistic, or musical, perhaps? Is health and fitness important to you? Do you have any unique talents? If you have those, and if you're interested in, in telling us those, your talents, please put that on the first one. First one, please. We would love to know you more. The next one, as you continue on writing, church roles. There are many different roles in the church that you might be interested in such way as hospitality, social outreach, prayer, women's ministry, and ushering the way, uh, the way food kitchen, health, and many, many others. If you would like to contribute and participate in running of the church and there is a role, a form of evangelism that you would get, you're personally excited and motivated, new ideas, welcome also, then please let us know by writing it below. If you are interested, media ministry, you know, whatever skills you got, right? We're open to whatever skills, singing, hospitality, cooking, yeah, whatever it is, as long as it's not irritating people and annoying people, we are welcome. Well, welcoming you. You're going out to the community, giving out, yeah. So anything, anything that you can think of, even if it's not written there, you can put something in there and say, hey, this is the talent I don't want to dedicate. And then after you write, we will dedicate that, uh, your, your writing, and we will pray for each and every one of us to help God finish the cause. Amen? Amen. Use the talent. As soon as you're finished. And then we will pray. Okay, so we'll wrap it up, my dear friends. Last thought I want to give to you is based on John chapter 4. If you have your Bibles with you, John chapter 4, as we close in the thought this afternoon, John chapter 4, verse 33, there was a situation where um, God or Jesus Christ was talking to his disciples and they were working for the whole day and they were all hungry. The disciples came to Jesus and asked Jesus, Lord, have you eaten? And remember, Jesus said, oh, I have meat or food to eat that you know not of. 
You know nothing about this food. And they said, does anyone give Jesus something to eat? Then Jesus said, you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, I have meat or food to eat that you know not of. And he said, my meat is to do the will that sent me and to finish his work. That changed my mindset as a Christian. Jesus said, my food is not just physical food. My food is to finish God's work. You know what that tells us, young people and elders, everyone in this church? That tells us that Jesus' purpose in this world is not just about physical or temporal security. It's not just about to survive in this world. The main purpose why Jesus is in this world is to help God finish the work. You're here in Sydney, my dear friends, not just for your physical needs, not just for you to survive and gain money. The main purpose here working here in Sydney is to help God finish the work. That's my desire. I use my talent, Lord, to help you. Not just to me to gain money, but to help you finish the work. Would you, that, would you like to be part of that movement? Lord, help me to help you finish the work. Let's pray for a commitment in this paper, and we'll give it to our ushers as we go on and end the program. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us an opportunity this afternoon for us to talk about experiences. In the Bible, it is important for us to listen to testimonies. You said in the book of Revelation that you, we've overcome Satan by the word of the testimony. And so we claim the promise, Father, that these testimonies will not just amaze us and inspire us. May it be an opportunity for, for us, Lord, to test your promises and to step out of the boat and do something for you. It may not be in China. It may not be in Indonesia. It may not be in other parts of the world. It may be in Sydney, Lord, using our talents to advance your cause. Bless us, Father, and we commit those people who write their hobbies and talents in the paper that they may use those talents, Lord, to help you finish the work in this generation, especially in this church. Guide us today, provide for our needs, and may your spirit, Lord, be upon our hearts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you, everyone.